It is Tuesday, January 8. Here's what's making the news today. The Ghana Lands and Surveys Commission, GLSC, is ready for the hosting of the 17th session of the Committee for the Review of the Implementation of the Convention, CRIC 17, at the Arthur Chung Conference Center later this month. Alexis Rodney has our first report. The first of its kind in Guyana and the Caribbean, the Crick Conference, will examine the United Nations global desertification issues. As a signatory to the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, Guyana has been working with other countries, formulating strategies to deal with land degradation, drought and soil issues, among others. InfoHub visited the Ortachung Convention Center on Monday and spoke with GLSC's Commissioner Trevor Ben. We at the Guyana Lands and Surveys Commission, as the host organization, have been working with the support of a number of other um, government departments and agencies, ministries, to ensure that all of the systems are in place, all of the um, security issues are taken care of, transportation, logistics generally. And so we believe that we are really set and ready for the hosting of the conference. Close to 600 persons from 196 countries are expected to participate in the conference from January 28 through 31. All the countries that will be coming will be looking at issues relating to uh, those areas mentioned before. And so um, as, as a signatory to the convention, Guyana has a vested interest and we have been working very closely with the 196 countries in coming up with strategies to deal with land degradation, for example. Established in 1994, the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification is the sole legally binding international agreement linking environment and development to sustainable land management. The convention addresses specifically the arid, semi-arid and dry subhumid areas known as the drylands, where some of the most vulnerable ecosystems and peoples can be found. The last quick conference was held two years ago in Nairobi, Kenya. Reporting for InfoHub, Alexis Rodney. Chairman of the Ghana Elections Commission, GCOM, retired Justice James Patterson, has informed that his medical leave has been extended following a visit to his doctor on January 7, 2019. This is according to a press release from the commission issued today. The chairman was expected to resume duty on January 8, 2019 and to reconvene a statutory meeting after being absent since early December due to illness. While the chairman has been recovering well, the commission notes that he was advised by his doctor to have some additional rest to ensure that he fully recovers covers to effectively resume duty. The Commission says further updates on the Chairman's health will be provided. The Ghana Water Incorporated, GWI, is addressing the inequities of water supply between the hinterland and coastland. Seneca Thorne has the details. The Ghana Water Incorporated has been focusing heavily on the improvement of infrastructure to provide access to portable water to the hinterland and riverine communities. For the first time, the utility company has established the Department of Hinterland Support and Management with the aim of addressing the inequities that exist between the hinterland and coastland. GWI's Managing Director, Dr. Richard Van Rostals, explained. The President has called on us to address the inequities between the, the hinterland regions and the coastal regions. We have had a, a rather itinerant um, approach to the hinterland and uh, together with the board we discussed this matter and we have now established a department of hinterland um, um, support and management headed by an executive director, Mr. Jailal. Dr. Van Westral said that the overarching goal is to move to the point of 24-hour access to water supply throughout the hinterland. Remember, there is no cost recovery in the hinterland. So our responsibility is also not only to operate the system, but to provide electricity for the system to function. So the, um, the cost for diesel is that of GWI. Um, also, the cost for electricity, for example, in a place like Region 10 is the responsibility of GWI. So we have, we have to, um, it varies from different areas, 
but the aim is to move to the point of 24 uh, our, our access. In 2018, the GWI drilled new wells at Orinoc, Coco, and Maruco Region 1 to provide portable water to more than 500 residents. The systems at Hosororo, Barabina, and Mabruma were also upgraded, and a new water treatment system was installed at Matthews Ridge. The new water supply systems at 4 miles and 5 miles Bartica, Region 7, are in their final stages. A catchment area was also constructed and a photovoltaic system distribution main installed at Chinapau Region 8, while new wells were drilled in Region 9. Seneca Thorne, InfoHub. Government has rebuffed claims that U.S. $18 million signing bonus from ExxonMobil was hidden for over a year. The allegations were made by opposition member of Parliament, Juan Edgehill, in a letter to the press on Monday. According to Finance Minister Winston Jordan, the money was never hidden, as it was always in an interest-bearing account at the Bank of Guyana. The Finance Minister said there is a transparent mechanism for transferring funds from the account to the consolidated fund, then out to pay legal fees via the budget. Minister of State Joseph Harmon last year had reported reported that the signing bonus would be placed in the consolidated fund before it is used to pay lawyers to fight a Venezuela border controversy case at the World Court. More on this story can be read on our website. The Central Housing and Planning Authority, CHNPA, in collaboration with the Inter-American Development Bank, IDB, launched its first adequate housing and urban accessibility program at Seafield Sapphire recently. Details in this report. The program, which commenced last year, provides two housing projects, the Core Home Support and the Home Improvement Subsidy. The Core Home Support offers a 400-square-foot flat concrete building at a cost of $4 million. Qualified applicants are required to make a down payment of $100,000 towards the construction, while the Home Improvement Subsidy provides a grant of $500,000 in materials. The Core Home Support targets persons who are living on their house lots mainly and may have a deplorable um, house or a house that is below habitable standard. Those persons can apply for the core home support. It's a 400, uh, 400 square feet flat concrete building and the cost is up to four million, not more than four million dollars. And once a person qualifies for such a project, they're only required to pay a hundred thousand dollars. The remaining cost is subsidized. And the home improvement subsidy, it's a $500,000 grant in materials. Senior Community Development Officer for CHNPA, Antoinette Bennett. She said the application process for the project was started on November 1 last year and will be closed on February 1 this year. They register for the program, they uplift the application form and they have the interview done. And what we're doing here today um, as the person's registered, they can actually have the interview done on spot today. And when that process is finished, it will be followed by a verification visit, some field work the officers will do. And once the person is eligible, we'll inform them and we start the process. The project will be in four districts. Areas in Georgetown, Industry to Lebanon Intention in the east coast of Demerara, Eccles to Diamond Grove on the east bank of Demerara, and Parfit Harmony in Region 3. Persons who are applying for the core home support project must be living in a regularized squatting area or a CHNPA allocated housing scheme. They must also walk with their necessary documents. Reporting for InfoHub, Alexis Rodney. Still to come, Ministry of Public Health monitoring eight cases of dengue fever in Lethem and Support Center for Venezuelan Migrants set up in Region 2. Stay with us. Staying on treatment for HIV can lead to a normal, healthy life. Remain on treatment once you've started. Don't share or use someone else's pills. Staying on your medication not only helps to improve your quality of life, but decreases the risk of HIV transmission to others. A message from USAID, PEPFAR, Advancing Partners and Communities Guyana, NAPS, and the Ministry of Public Health. Welcome back. Officials of the Ministry of Public Health are monitoring eight persons who have been diagnosed with dengue fever in Lethem. Health officials in the region are intensifying efforts to avoid other persons contracting the fever. Delicia Haynes sat with Chief Medical Officer Dr. Shamdio Persaud, who provided an update. Dr. Persaud has received reports from the border town of Lethem that eight persons, all adults, have contracted type 2 dengue in recent days. 
This has since put health officials in the area on guard against possible increases in the number of cases while ensuring the required treatment is available. The ministry is working on determining whether the persons affected who all live in Lethem traveled recently. Lethem sits on the border with Brazil. The vector control teams are out in the tongue um, doing some, some source control. And um, if you recall, dengue is really a vector-borne disease spread by um, the Aegis aegypti mosquito, which is a common mosquito around our dwelling. The CMO said initial symptoms are related to fever and joint aches. A rapid blood test should be conducted which will indicate whether a patient has a positive or negative diagnosis. Fever, very classic fever, like with a lot of joint and body aches. All right. As a matter of fact, one of the common um, symptoms that present is a back-breaking fever. Um, persons with classic dengue would usually have reddening of their conjunctiva, so red eyes, watering, even some respiratory symptoms in the early stages. The Environmental Health Department is also mobilized to promote safe garbage disposal practices while ensuring residents eliminate breeding sites for the mosquito which carries the disease. Monitoring for other possible cases is ongoing. For Info Hub, Delicia Haynes. The National Multi-Sectoral Coordinating Committee during its first meeting for 2019 announced that a two-story building has been identified by the Regional Administration of Pomeroon Supinam that will serve as a support center for Venezuelan migrants in that area. Once set up, migrants will have access to a wide range of support services, inclusive of documentation and immunization assistance at one convenient location. Some minor rehabilitation works are slated to be carried out in the building with funding from the International Organization for Migration. Minister of Citizenship Winston Felix, who heads the fortnightly forum, informed that his department and the Ghana Police Force will be conducting a joint operation at Ettering Bank and surrounding communities in the Kayuni Mazaruni region to address a number of issues that have been brought to his attention, including the immunization and documentation of migrants. The minister has tasked the GPF with the responsibility of ensuring that all boats ferrying passengers from Venezuela to Region 2 report to immigration authorities, who will be located at a central point along the Pomeroon River so that the migrants can be properly screened and processed before they disembark at various landings. To date, the number of documented Venezuelan migrants in Ghana stands at 3,868. Small forest operators in the Pomeroon Supinam region were recently enlightened on the need to have environmental authorization. Details in this Anara Khan report. Forest operators from villages across Region 2, which included indigenous communities, were part of the workshop where they were given a presentation on what an environmental authorization is and its importance. Senior Environmental Officer Collis Primo expressed optimism that with the completion of the workshop, persons will make efforts to acquire the environmental authorization. It was a fruitful workshop in my opinion. They would have... Um they would have learned a lot in terms of the application requirements and going through the application with them was, was, was very beneficial in, in terms of bringing them up to speed in what was required in terms of documentation, what is required in terms of the questions asked and so they're, they're in a better position to provide the information that the agency uh, needs in terms of the application process so that we could um, reach our, our, our requirements as it relates to developing a permit and better able to guide them as to what they need to, to implement in terms of uh, environmental safeguards. Participants lauded the workshop. I'm thankful for the education that they have set forth, you know, for concessionaires, small and big, in larger scales, and where you can obtain license, you know, through the range of the process of GFC, and all the agencies. For me, it's realizing that everything around you um, has its positive or negative, which is either being used or misused or abused. And in doing so, we can do so much damage to our environment. And it, we really need to take it serious like, on um, the things we do every day and we take for granted learning to be more about the, um, the way to go is, an, is a plus for us so that we could take back to our community and, you know, and enlighten our, our villagers that what they need to do and do it from now on. 
The aim of the program is to have all forest operators authorized in keeping with Section 14 of the Environmental Act. Focus is also placed on sensitizing forest operators on the European Union Forest Law Enforcement, Governance and Trade Agreement to protect the environment. The first workshop was held in Region 10 last December. The Ministry of Public Telecommunications has noted reports that there is an upsurge in unsolicited calls from overseas to cellular subscribers in Guyana. The ministry via release stated that this attempted fraud occurrence is, however, not unique to Guyana and it is apparently intended to get subscribers to return calls to numbers, which are then billed at a premium rate. Subscribers are therefore advised to not return calls to overseas numbers they do not recognize. That's all for this evening. Connect with us on WhatsApp, like and subscribe to our Facebook page for notifications. You can also follow us on Instagram for updates and visit our website at dpi.gov.gy. Your bridge and weather reports are up next. Goodbye.